Love 15. That was a nice punchy serve from uh, Ketsmanovic, 16 Ks above his average. Uh, it came back and he ended up losing the point. Ominous. already showing that he is a man that plays without borders it's all a suggestion where the baseline and the sidelines are just sort of wandering in there off uh, nothing much to yeah. be honest yeah it was like a vague approach wasn't it the last met in Miami and the one thing that Kitsmanovic will notice immediately taken on Alcaraz is there's about a two meter difference in terms of where Alcaraz is trying to return this first serve from at the moment. He was way deeper back in South Florida. But we might see him shift a little bit deeper because the serving from Kitsmanovic in the last 12 to 18 months has improved significantly. Game and Katsmanovic. First game. Ben who used to work with uh, Marin Cilic. As we take a little hover. What a tournament this has proved to be. From the storylines that have been written within the rectangle, but also from the amount of fans that have come through the turnstiles here as we take a little look. So that arm used to not, you wouldn't be in, able to see his back arm on his serve when you sort of saw him come onto the tour. It would have been shielded by his chest. So that's been one of the big differences for him just to get it much looser and longer to try and get a little bit more pace. Well, well you'd, ha you'd have to do that to increase the pace. Otherwise, it's too restricted, yeah, isn't it? It's like, it's like half a swing. That wind predictor, as much as we love it, is a little disrespectful to the quality that Ketsmanovic has off the ground. Fifteen. Uh, Alcaraz quite often goes against what would be my recommendation when you approach is not to go across court with that forehand and run in, but he puts so much pace and power on that forehand it's hey, it's a different beast than what mo most people do they like to approach down the line and come in make the right hander hopefully chip the ball back for the volley Eight years old, he would spend 50% of the match up at the net, there and he know. has uh, made a lifetime on the pros of being able to be very proficient up there. But you look at the movement, and you can see it's just been years of wanting to get there. Look how he moves through that. Well, it's explosive without looking so. Weight on to the me. outside leg. Yeah, he's a, he's a stallion. Maybe I should just say thoroughly. <laughs> Samuel Lopez, bottom left with the glasses on, and that is a forehand that nobody can defend against. And a very different forehand than when he was taken on Ketsmanovic in 2022 as well. Turn, wasn't it? Yeah, 40, and I've heard you sing Ketchmanovich's praises, Mark, from the back of the court. He he beat Tommy Paul from back there, didn't he? Who was a semi finalist last year. Uh, 
Yeah, Mark Adams. Both through their opening Long service games Miami. nice and comfortably. Just backing into that thought about his forehand. So when they played in Miami, his forehand RPMs was something that we were always talking about, the spin rate on it. It was up about 3,400. Huge numbers on the tour. Tour leading numbers from Alcaraz. Sits just under 3,000. Literally one RPM under 3,000. He has flattened it out massively and a little bit of a drop off in pace as well. Fifteen. You know, it's sort of interesting seeing the movement in the bottom tier of this stadium. The, the rules have changed this year. The tournament wants to let patrons in rather than keeping them out for three games straight at the start. I think it's a good thing. Um, and the players will get used to it, I think. There needs to be a bit of control, though, doesn't there, in the early stages of that? Oh, that's big. That is so big. Wally, you're down close there. You, you get the real uh, evidence of how hard he hits that ball. It's tough from so high in the stadium where we are, but it's obvious, really. Yeah, he goes through the gears, doesn't he? And the, the takeaway is very similar. He just gets set, but then he just fires the racket head, delays that wrist, and it catches up quickly. Timing perfect. What a beautiful forehand that was, too. 15, it's 30. a subtle difference, but he took his time and deliberately hit that with more spin and more height. Oh, I love that forehand. You know, it, yes, he can crush the winner, but this one, he hits higher. Comes off the racket higher, and he loops it deep to give himself time to get in a commanding position. Ball. Ominous. Searching for an early break. to get to this stage, not then. Alcaraz with the luck. Two one. Leads by two against one. Well, he didn't win the point, but you kind of get an understanding of what Ketsmanovic, if he does have a little bit of time on the ball, can do. And that's exactly what his coach, Ivan Sikas, was wanting him to do, was to get Alcaraz on the run. Don't put too many balls through the middle short. You're going to get in all sorts of trouble. There's nothing you can do about that, though. Young John Fitzgerald, that's oh, stop it. No, not a chance, not a snowball's chance. See the movement, look how lithe he looks. He's got the power, but then, but then when he gets up and going, he, his movement looks just lithe and graceful. It's, it's quite a contrast. So he was there for that next one, really, if it had come back. And he, he got a touch of luck, didn't he? But I was thinking, how many players would have made that luck? Yeah. He, Novak, possibly. You know, Federer back in the day, but it was extraordinary. I, th I thought when he was defending the forehand that the second to last ball he hit, he was going to dive on the cement. It looked like he was starting to launch himself. He wasn't far off. And, uh, guys, similar conditions to last night, so Alcaraz will now serve into a, a slight breeze. This is the tougher end. Just beautiful to watch, isn't it? I'm going to be interested to see when Alcaraz uh, 
brings out the actual drop shot. That was a drop volley, but uh, in Miami, he had a 90% success rate with it. And also the fact that Ketsmanovic is going to be tired, will he use that to try and drag a little more fatigue into those legs? There's the flight again from Alcaraz. We've seen it on a couple of occasions. We've seen him smooth the forehand out. Great variety. Bit of a contrast to last night where two men just stood toe to toe. And Wally, you're right, that's, that's going to be where the challenge for Ketsmanovic, uh, his coach Ivan already talking, because so much of his success comes from the back of the court, doesn't quite have that fluidity that Alcaraz has to finish at the net when he needs to change things up. Well, he's got some weapons. He picked the right ball there to go after and executed beautifully. and this start from Alcaraz is complete respect for his opponent and the ability his opponent has. Yeah. Yeah, he's up for it, isn't he? I was about to say, I was noticing the power of Ketchmanovic from the back too. A couple of the forehands he hit in that game, but then Alcaraz sort of went to the next level there. Three out of 28 drop shots attempted at the Australian Open this year. Successful for Alcaraz, big part of his repertoire. Just so interesting for me to sit here and watch this. It's like total tennis. I've seen a bit of everything already from Alcaraz in four games. I was just trying to digest the last night's match where, you know, what could Demon have done differently? And, you know, there just was not enough variety. He he couldn't take the ball out of the strike zone of Rublev. But I'm just watching Alcaraz here, and it's low, it's high, it's fast, there's slice. The variety is incredible. Let us go. Thirty fifteen. 
It's like he's a young man who wants to experiment. But he's so good that it works. You know, you encourage young players to want to diversify their game and have other ways of winning points and, and give themselves uh, extra dimensions to, to compete and play. He does it just so naturally and, and it works. 40, 50. And the live movement is what I'm really taken with. He, he's got a spring in his step and almost a spring in all of his joints. He just pops up and down and then he explodes. Then he looks graceful. Ball. should talk about the superlatives there 40, because that was a good approach Wally yeah but I catch Manovich he, he should not be despondent I mean if the guy can come up with this sort of stuff to win points too good because he is hitting the ball awfully well he's just got to hang tough he's down a break yeah but hang on to your serve if uh, Alcaraz can keep this up too good but catch Manovich he looks the goods Manovich taking as much time as he can. He's got a lot to think about. Advantage. Now, even that serve, 206, close to the line. Alcaraz is quicker than most. The first step and the anticipation is better than most. He was there. He had his full face of the racket on that. Exceptional tennis. 3 2 Alcaraz. And after that onslaught that he's uh, had to kind of bravely fight early on here, Ketsmanovic, he's shown everyone just a little bit of what he's uh, all about. Interestingly enough, here, Wally, as well, you, you obviously can see how hard Ketsmanovic hits the ball, came into this match hitting a faster forehand than Alcaraz. I don't know if many people that watch tennis would think that coming into this. Everyone talks about Alcaraz's strengths, uh, but he's hit a harder forehand and he's hitting it harder than Alcaraz out there tonight at the moment. It's it's impressive, isn't it, courtside? Oh yeah, this guy's this guy's a ball. I was really surprised. I've not seen him, as I say, I've not seen him play for a couple of years, but Pitch, I, I cast my mind back to, you know, some big upsets, and I'm not saying we're looking at a big upset tonight, but if you want to be big players in the big events, think of Sodling v Nadal, think of what Stan's been able to achieve. Being a power pack does not hurt. Being able to stand up to the physicality of Alcaraz will not hurt. Well, it's been a great start by both, but just uh, marginally better for Alcaraz. The rising star in the setting sun of Melbourne. Interesting last season at the back end of last year indoors on hard he went a away from using his kicker out wide on the ad side you're, you've already seen it in his opening game from this end um, 
I'm going to be interested to see just how often he does it against Ketsmanovic tonight, just to try and pull the serve off the court outside the doubles line. There's your answer, Pech, and what a serve it is with the breeze at your back. And we didn't, we just didn't see enough of that last night from Young Demon. This is the total tennis you have to employ these days if you want to be the very best. I just want to confirm to everyone that this is live tennis. Uh, Mark Petchy did not know that was going to happen, that he just suspected. You can see the future. He, he is dangerous though, isn't he, Ketchmanovic? He, he can hit the ball. Gee, he may not have the versatility that this young Grand Slam champion has down the other end. Not yet anyway, but, he, but from the back of the court, goodness, he's pretty scary. Not a bad time to experiment. Game, I got us. Scary thing, as successful as he's been, and he's been more successful at this stage than uh, a lot of players in terms of uh, wins on the ball. By the time they're 20, he's still got room to grow with his serve. Doesn't always hit the spots quite as well on the juice side as he just did there. Close to the line, no one gets it back. Oh. As good as Ketsmanovic is, he's yet to be a top five player in the world when he's squared up against them. He's lost all eight meetings. Fifteen thirty. was on a run of 11 straight losses against top tenors. He beaten Felix Oje Aliasim in Miami in 2022, picked up a win against Holger Rune late last year in Stockholm, who was a top tenor. He has struggled against the elite. Samuel Lopez, who was with Alcaraz at Queens when he picked up the title there, he uh, formerly coached Juan Carlos Ferrer, helped him as well, so uh, very comfortable with being inserted into the team. Oh. Well, that's not a bad shot after the previous shot that we just saw.
again, look at this. Perfect form and function. The rotation in the upper body, the head staying so still, and the unloading of power. Yes. Oh, a fabulous effort from Kensmanovic to keep himself in the conversation in this opening set. Trails by the break. Always an interesting time, isn't it, as you're kind of looking at through the window panes, well, trying to look through the window panes of these players' minds, wondering what they're thinking at this particular stage. Kitsmanovic, who's a world-class player in his own right, Fitzy right now will be feeling as though he is very much second best out here in terms of how these points are developing. Well, I think so, and and that that's sort of logical. I mean, he can he can tell himself he's uh, he's right there, and he and he should be because if he doesn't tell himself and he doesn't believe it to some degree, he's he'll drop off the pace. But but Alcaraz looks more ominous. Uh, I mean, and that's. That's no uh, disrespect you know, to Mima at all. He, he's looked impressive to me. Time. But he's special, this young guy from Spain, and uh, a different league to most of the young players of his vintage. I, I think Mima has really handled himself beautifully, though, in the first part of this match. I mean, he could have been down there 5-2. Um, got, uh, got an... A gift really from Alcaraz there on the break point when he missed a pretty simple forehand by his standards. But he's in the first set. He's max matching reasonably well for power. Not without a chance. 15 left. Care of Ketsmanovic 2022 in Miami went on to pick up the title. He joined a fairly illustrious group of players that have won Masters 1000 titles. As a teenager, the likes of Agassi, Chang, Djokovic, Nadal picked up six as a teenager. Oh. Slight delay, isn't no it, delay. before the deadly hit that comes your way. Coach gave Ketsmanovic a chance, didn't it? 40, but he was good enough to get out of jail there, Alcarez. He, he, you know what I love? At 30 love, he tries something. 
He never sits on his laurels. He served wide and came in, lost a point at 30 love. Always experimenting, experimenting and uh, expanding his potential. Ballet comes to the tennis court. Yeah! Oh. Kurtzmanovic to stay in the rally. A front rower that can leap, Wally. Yeah, no, I've got him in the second row, Fitzy. <laughs> I've got him packing down in the second row. But um, that's in your rugby league team, is it? There was a there was a moment earlier in the in this game where he was scrambling at the back of the court, and you could just see the difference in athleticism. But he is strong. If he gets bat on ball, he's got a good chance to make it. There's a huge difference right there. Catch Manovich is a big man when he's at full stretch. He just doesn't have that uh, that litheness, that agility that you're talking about, Fitzy. But there's probably only one other guy on tour right now that does. Lades of sunshine just coming through the tall buildings here in Melbourne as Alcaraz swishes his blade nicely through this opening set to take himself to within a game. Kitsmanovic, who won a Kitsball on the clay at a little bit of altitude in 2020, almost won the year before in Antalya, in Turkey on the grass, had a championship point. type of shots carried into the final in Delray last year lost to Taylor Fritz and Esteril where he came up short against Kasparud. Well he just gave uh, Carlos Alcaraz a little bit of his own medicine here. Significant backhand there down the line. Oh my goodness. That, that, is that the fastest one we've seen tonight? I think it is, Wally. Uh, I didn't see it, Fitzy. What just happened? <laughs> oh, my goodness. They tell me you've got to have a strong base in tennis to generate power. This man has a base like no other. Game gets my noise. And there's the icing on the cake serve onto the line just the one game behind as he has been for the majority of this set Alcaraz will serve for it well I hope we get another opportunity to see that for and it was something a little bit special can we measure the pace of that forehand pitch or do we need to put that in the Hadron Collider to get some kind of reading <laughs> I'm trying to get a reading for you but I think at the moment they're just trying to catch up with it themselves yeah, it was just a bolt of lightning, wasn't it? And, it? and it's interesting, it kind of comes from the same stroke as well with Ketsmanovic. You don't really see it coming. I mean, that is some electrifying pace. 163 Ks off the strings of Ketsmanovic, Wally. And this is slow motion. In real time, I I'm not surprised Wally didn't see it. But I am Diana. surprised he knows what the Hadron Collider is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was entertaining. Mia Mia Kismanovic took that in his stride, didn't he? That forehand, he, he, it was no big deal to him. He went to the side of the court, sat down, wasn't necessarily impressed with himself. Thank you. 
What a collection of forehands. Neither of these two have used up all their powder in this opening set. Alcarez looking at ice it here. Run there. Did our caress and it gave Maybe this man the chance to really explode on the backhand and he sort of he won that arm wrestle, didn't he? Won the prestigious Orange Bowl junior title back in 2015, beat Sitsipas in a third set breaker. Finished 2016 as the world junior number one. Complicated. Wanted it the drop shot, but Kesmanovic had made a nice move forward, taking it away. Yeah, a little bit fancy there, I think, and that's when maybe you have too many choices. Just a regular topspin forehand here might have done the trick. He ended up with the wrong grip and did try to play the topspin forehand. Disappointing there for Kecmanovic. He doesn't react too badly. It was Alcaraz. You heard the, the yell from that. But a missed opportunity here. to keep Kesmanovic at bay late on in that opening set. But what an attractive... <laughs> Connors took a dozen as well. Rafa took 13. Mats Wallander, who was an extraordinary teenager, 13. I won't roll down the whole list, but I will get to the bottom of uh, the one that I have. Novak Djokovic took 27 majors to pick up his third one. I don't think he minds now. Seems like he's won every second one <laughs> since. It's his world and we're just living in it. It's funny, Pitch, you talk about the serve of uh, Kecmanovic. He, he starts off like Novak, not quite as supple with the racket, but he kind of throws his head away from his body before he starts the serve, so the rotation gets lost a little. 
Definitely loses a bit of power. Watch that, he just throws it away. Game, First game, second. He's so strong though, he's still hitting the first serve over 200. Oh, he's a bull, he's an absolute bull, but it's interesting, he doesn't really rotate under the ball. You can see, he almost gets himself in yep. that kick serve position, but there's no real shoulder rotation. Now we see the racket start to drop, but he, he's just a beast, so yeah, he pops it. You think that's fixable, Wally? Yeah, I do, I do. It's, a, it's just an unusual movement with the head, isn't it, as he starts to serve. I mean, it's, it's really about working your body under the ball, isn't it? Look at Brian Shelton, how he works his body under the ball, and he only lands just inside the baseline. All the power is up and over. No flaws in that full one. I, I tell you what, though, Petch, I mean, if what he did in Dubai, you if he's got it. an appetite for work and he's prepared to stick at it, I think the sky's the limit for this guy. He's awesome. Agree. Oh. I was admiring that forehand for too long here. Forgot to see how quick Ketsmanovic Kex, was. Moving forward, great effort. It's not an easy shot to hit that because you know pretty much from where you are on the court, you've got to hit a winner. You're out of position. If he gets a racket on it, there's so much court to hit it into. twice this game though he's given away a free one there i wonder what caused that i mean he maybe just ran got a bit too close to the first one but gee you can see the anguish there on on the coaches Mind Ketsmanovic perhaps drifting over a little bit. Oh, it's another 
Absolutely startlingly good pick up from Ketsmanovic. Thought it was Alcaraz's point. Yes. Well, losing the previous one didn't deter Carlos, did it? He's just a bit too far back in the court, I think, to play that. He's behind the baseline. And this guy's quick. He's the quickest second rower I think I've ever seen. Although I'll defer to Wally on that. Maybe I'll clarify that while you say on a tennis court. Good wheels to those two drop shots. I've seen him a couple of times laterally just look, you know, to lunge and be a bit, a little bit awkward, but gee, he moved well forward twice and then to control the racket face the way he did. Good skills from a big man. Yeah, he's having to think his way through his service games there. That was an off-pace kind of serve into the body that Ketsmanovic really didn't see coming at all. One of the rare times, as you can see, he just got jammed himself. What I was going to say, just circling back to the thought I had, a couple of times it feels like the kick serve primarily is coming into his backhand, Ketsmanovic, because he's up on the baseline. He's getting caught a little bit late with it to the side of him, and he's not able to get behind the ball and drive in. He might just want to open up the forehand side a bit. As Alcaraz mops up after some wonderful work on the slice backhand, just open up the forehand and let Alcaraz hit it there a few times with a second aggressively. And if he does, he does, and he hits his spot too good. But kind of feel as though that's an area where Ketsmanovic has tr got to try and get the jump on Alcaraz on this second serve. Otherwise, there's not going to be many breaks to serve for him. Just didn't do enough with the forehand approach, did he? Decelerated there. It was the first time I think we've seen him do it in a while, and you can't give Alcaraz too many chances there. You needed to put that ball away.
Well, the first haymaker had good sound effects attached to it. The second one had huge velocity. Well, I think we all giggled there, but it was like in shock almost at how hard he hit it and just coming to terms. And that ball is still in. Well, it hasn't been hit out of shape, obviously, but 171 Ks. Is that right? Yep. Advantage. You need flexibility Advantage. almost to be, you almost need to be triple jointed, don't you, to, you, to get that sort of racket head speed? Kecmanovic, second set. Kecmanovic leads by two games to one. Let's take a little uh, dip through some of the things that's been going on out here. And obviously Alcaraz in the lead. Let's take a look at what he's been doing very nicely. And that is attacking the strength of, uh, well, there will be players out there will tell you that Kezmanovic backhand is better, but he's going to hit more winners from the forehand. So that is arguably attacking the strength in that regard. There's more danger lurking. Lots of short balls there just over the service line on the 70% sort of strip that we're looking at right now. So obviously when you look at this, it looks very sort of 1D. You've got to imagine the balls are coming across and then flying past the singles line, across into the doubles line, sort of dissecting those. So he's trying to pull Ketsmanovic with those short shots Time. off the court, which he's done a really good job with. He, he does have to be a little careful there, though, because Ketsmanovic has, has shown us that his foreign down the line is one of his favorite weapons. There's the 170 forehand. Yeah, it looked as good second time around as the first time. Yeah. Not sure if it looked better in slow motion or in real real time, but I feel like you've only you've almost got to have an amazing group of joints, your elbow, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. No, you just need a bicep fitty. <laughs> Fifteen love. It's all about muscles. How confident is he, though? I mean, that is not an easy smash. It's a high lob. He was on the back foot, and he went across court with the smash, which is fraught with more danger than going off with it. Because you have to pull the racket face across the ball more as a right-hander to get it out there. So a little more risky. Game That's just beautiful, isn't it? Two games on. You don't see him as a, a chip and charge sort of guy or a slicer of the back end to approach. Or, but when he approaches, he hits it within half a meter of the baseline. And it looked like he did it in his sleep, didn't it? Knocked the volley off easily. He's just a complete player.
That's just as he meant it. Well, from his point of view, Ketchmanovic just has to keep his nose in front here and just build a little bit of frustration for Alcaraz. You saw some there. to love but it certainly wasn't leads. easy for Ketsmanovic but he's moving in the right direction here in the second set 3-2 You look at Ketsmanovic's game and you can see it's been built on those foundations that you get out of uh, South Florida over there. You can see this, the, the sound ground strokes, maybe not the most potent of serves, but that's kind of been the trademark coming out of that part of the world. You look at somebody like Alcaraz fits in, you look at some of the stories that people have told about him. When he was five years old, he went to his first tournament and basically it was the first time they played with normal tennis balls rather than depressurized balls. And every time the ball bounced, it was go over his head. So the coach that took him to this tournament said within just one set, Alcaraz had moved inside the baseline, would literally volley everything and then follow it into the net. He almost Don won the match, almost turned it around. But his Sneak. mind was already working out different ways to beat people. Sneaky little guy. Maybe just extremely smart. Spanish fans have flocked into this arena for many players over the years. They're back now for the Spanish number one, world number two, Carlos Alcaraz. Oh, that belongs on the MCG, doesn't it? Front foot forward. That was a half volley that you, we, can, we can take that for granted, but I promise you that is not an easy shot. To redirect that, know where your racket face is and half volley it. Don't you love his variety? The change of pace, versatility, the experimental shot making he has. This is beautiful. Out of nowhere, just takes the pace off it, rolls it out of court and opens it up with the next one. It's such a rare combination, isn't it, Fitzy? You saw that little roll back in. We've seen the drop shots, the slice. You've got all this artistry in touch and then the brutality. Federer had the artistry and the touch, not quite that top-end power. Ball change, please. New ball. Well, we might have to be a little careful there. Three against 
the great man. The greats are imitated, not necessarily duplicated. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see the similarities there, and but a long way to go for this young man to to compare, as we all know. But but yeah, the start of his career is just a phenomenon, really. It has the foundations of a great, great player. And then while he takes a two-hander off a second serve and tries to hit and come in, so for something else, keep the opposition guessing. between the absolute dynamite on the forehand side Even. and then the death touch on the volley was absolutely sumptuous. That is unanswerable tennis. I wonder how often he's, his shot making has been called sumptuous. I hear you. The power followed by that, probably appropriate. Boys, in amongst it all, I will take that little yeah, chip yeah. return. I haven't seen it yet in the match, but they're valuable. He makes extraordinary shots look normal. there Carlos 15 40. Miam is disappointed with that he, he feels he was unlucky it was a miss hit did he have a was there an obstruction there because Carlos thought the ball was going out and he, he basically went oh like it was was that a distraction I don't think so was that what he was asking no he's just complaining about the bad luck but I tell you what it was fairly loud <laughs> Blindsided by the absolute brilliance from Alcaraz, who breaks free in the second set, 4-3. Everyone's searching for perfection. You can't get it in the entirety of a match, but sometimes you can feel it and see it, and that was perfect, wasn't it, Wally? It's just unbelievable, the tennis that he plays, and just the variety of spins and shakes that he's throwing at Kekmovic. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking, Petch, is it, is it out of respect? Does he know how dangerous this man is, so he's come out absolutely on song? And he seems so determined to make a point. It's just unbelievable, the dynamic hitting, but then just the blend of variety and pace, and I'm blown away. I don't know where tennis is going. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Well, we know where this set potentially is going. It's going out for us as well. An absolute gem of a backhand from one of the brightest stars in men's tennis.
Well, it's a rare thing for someone to applaud in the commentary box, but I was just guilty of it. That previous point from this young man was quite extraordinary. Dinner. See why he made a little shift in his racket back in 2021 as well. Alcaraz as he came onto the main tour, absolutely blistering pace that he had, but needed to get a little bit of control. So he went from the pure aero to the pure aero VS, which just gives you uh, one extra string. So it was a 16-19 string pattern, 16-20 he plays with these days. Yeah, so he's got enough power. He just wanted a little bit, a touch, a smidgen more control. Yeah, it doesn't feel like he's lost a lot of power in that transition either, does it? <laughs> Not to the naked eye, it doesn't. Gee, that's been a good serve from two, hasn't it? Yeah. The three-quarter kicker, he gets it above shoulder height, so it's out of the strike zone. Done it on second serve. Good change up there. I tell you what, he's a different artist to Roger Federer, but he's got a lot of art about him. <laughs> what flair. <laughs> he just held the ball, waited for the opposition to move. Clever. And how's the smile? just infatuated with his skill from both players here how the how was that shot that that shot there was unbelievable at full stretch he played a controlled drop shot some play the game some change it and you kind of feel as though that's what Alcaraz is doing at the moment He is playing shots that fits in his very best, could not pull off, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm not even sure Fitzy thought about the shots, let alone pulled them off, Ollie. It's time for reducing the silliness. This is some of the best tennis you yeah. ever see right now. I mean, when the great ones start doing this, you, you just stop and admire. It's interesting, boys. There's a lot of movement in the crowd, even noise at the start of the point. These two just, they don't worry. They just yep. play, play on. No there drama. You, there you go. It's easy. Yeah, the feedback from the fans has been astonishingly good for Tennis Australia in terms of implementing this new rule. The players, to be honest, for the most part, have... Uh, got on with it and actually it hasn't bothered them at all but from the fans perspective their day out here has uh, increased in terms of happiness and pleasure exponentially oh. yeah they're, they're they're paid up patrons they're not locked out 
for three games straight. There's patrons over Kekmanovic's right shoulder now moving. There's people still finding their seats, but no one cares. Play on. Good for these two guys, I, I say. Well done. Forehand that he rips high and then kicks like a mule. It's like it's like a giraffe kick when it hits the court and comes off. It's just exploding like a hand grenade. And, and that's why it's hard for that next forehand of kick manage bitches to, to handle it. Just awesome. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm in awe watching this. This, this is uh, some of the best stuff you could ever see. The variety, the skill. Hey, Fitzy, when, when you come into volley, you got to want the volley and you've got to go after it. How was that first volley? Like, he attacked it. Is he the best volleyer in the world right now outside of Novak? Got to be close. Yes. This kid's 20 years old. Kesmanovic is doing a great job here of staying here, just waiting for yep. any potential dip, and he's having to play lights out tennis to do so. But one thing he has done, he has applied himself magnificently tonight. Continues to do so, and he gets his reward deservingly. So, the tougher task now, though, as he tries to recover the break. Alcaraz will serve for two sets to love lead. Then I know you love your boxing, Wally, and I tell you what, other players out there would have taken a few of these gut punches and perhaps rolled over. Not Ketsmanovic tonight. No, well, he's physically strong. He's got game. You know, he's got really well-produced shots. And it takes something special to break him down. But that's what we've seen tonight from Alcaraz. We've seen just the dynamic power, the one shot that can take the point. Or we've seen the combinations, you know, the slice coming in, taking time away. But I'm, I'm very, very impressed with Ketwanovic. Maybe a little top-end power and serve would help him. But outside of that, his game seems in order. He's not too keen to come to the net, but very, very solid from the back of the court. Yeah, and I think, Pitsy, that's probably what Wally's just said. Not too keen to come into net is the big differential, Diana. the big separator. Yeah, I, I think the top end skill set too. It, it, I mean, there is still a gap there, but I, I'm with Wally. I'm impressed with him. He, he can go places, this young kid. We know one of them is. Five years ago, there was a Sona Pip about what a special talent this man was and he has surfaced and he surfaced fast 
and he has caught everybody's attention. Already twice a major winner. Alcaraz serving for a two sets to love lead. He has here to compete. Nothing's phased him yet. Not easy to play your best tennis when the pressure it is at its most maximum, and that was the case there for Ketsmanovic. is just gorgeous and carved out 40, beautifully we've seen it so many times in the course of his career but the reason that it is so successful is that Alcaraz in this second set has been averaging about 160 k's of his plus one shot after his serve so Ketsmanovic has to back up and that's about the only way you can keep his forehand quiet at the moment. just a little bit off center and Alcaraz laces another one to the baseline of the serve and in doing so grabs the second set and people didn't think that utopia existed but apparently it does here in Melbourne well he made a mistake didn't he, he thought that ball was going out Carlos has had a couple of those, to Love be fair. Him. He's hit a couple of miss hits that have dropped in. But yet, yeah, they're playing continuously. The shot clock's never a, a problem. Pizzi, I had to laugh. Uh, what other players said, I don't walk around in their workplace. Why do they walk around in mine? And I thought, well, if they don't come to your workplace, you've got no work, buddy. <laughs> Phenomenal. 
just treating us to great point after great point. Yep. Well, these two guys are not worried about people walking around, and they're they're at the top of the men's game, really. And uh, you might want to think about that if you were the player that said that. Just think about it for a moment. Don't let your mouth go faster than your brain, maybe. Fifteen thirty. Survived from a couple of match points down against Struff. Same against Tommy Paul in the last round as well. It's been a miraculous journey through to the fourth round for Ketsmanovic. And it will be interesting to see what he has left in his legs here. Down two sets to love. to enjoy the return position from Alcaraz there because he's taken the second serve on and come in on the two-hander he knew that there was potential for the body serve and he had just shifted over enough to give himself space to hit a forehand and from then on he was on top of the rally coaxes that one down the line and he grabs another break point opportunity tennis you want to feel balanced you want to feel like you've got options I'd like to ask Kekmanovic right now how many times have you felt balanced he has just been pulled to every part of the court with every spin and pace imaginable there's a lovely quote from uh, the great artist Pablo Picasso he says good artists borrow great artists steal and they steal what they see from other people and they make it their own. It does become their own unique individual style. And I think everybody that sees Alcaraz and Novak, who has had a front seat against Alcaraz, and he's also said he sees bits of everybody in the way that Alcaraz plays. He's not the best player in the world yet, but my goodness me, he has something just a little bit special. And it's all on show tonight. number one pitch didn't he 16 months ago after that US Open victory or was it the Wimbledon victory Wimbledon victory yeah so he's already touched it great man's come back Novak but this is a rare rare talent here we're seeing
Tila. Carlos's dad, who taught him all the strokes. All the strokes at uh, Tiro de Pichon, which I'm sure doesn't sound anything like that when you say it in Spanish, but that was my attempt at it. Real Sociedad Club de Campo, which sits in the mountains overlooking Mercia as we overlook Melbourne Park and look back to the Melbourne CBD, is where he grew up playing his tennis. Alcaraz's grandfather had uh, started that particular club. It was a former hunting club before it got turned into uh, a private members club where he plays his tennis. Which is where the members first got to glimpse Alcaraz play. He used to stand behind the netting watching his uh, grandfather and dad play and mm -hmm. tell them about all the mistakes they were making. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> Well, he just knows when to explode, too, doesn't he? He knows, he knows with direction, with feel, with power, everything. He picks the right shot to hit so often. Had to hit that one a bit harder to make it a winner, and he did. Well, Wally, it feels like the the damn wall is about to break. It's it's just it's just been relentless. Yeah, there's no easy unforced errors just to give him a little bit of breathing space either. At this point, he needs a bit of help here, Kecmanovic. That'll help. Thank you. Was on. He's been absolutely deadly on the fly, of course, Alcaraz, but he is equally good and difficult to be on the perimeter of the court, and that's why Ketsmanovic overplays that. It's not just Alcaraz's game that's sweet out there tonight in the Rod Laver Arena. Well, this is what happens, isn't it, when over a period of time you can stay there and stay there with him. And then you have to take more risk. Then you have yep. to go closer to the line. Then you have to try and hit the ball bigger. And particularly if your natural habitat isn't in the forecourt to try and break up some of these rallies. Yes. It's pretty quiet down there, isn't it? It's be because I think the 
I mean, I'm, the crowd knows surely how how good this tennis is, and that they're just. Maybe just in awe of it, Wally, or, or maybe uh, realise that there's, it's not going to be extended too much longer, most likely. Yeah, well, Fitzy, I was just kind of thinking the same. It is a bit of a subdued atmosphere, of course, that erupts when they do something spectacular. But, you know, some of the stuff that, that, that he has done at end range, I mean, I don't know. If you don't play a lot of tennis, maybe you don't fully appreciate what he's up to. Absolutely extraordinary, astonishing, uh, Carlos Alcaraz, three love. Well, I got a feeling that they knew what they just saw. <laughs> oh, that was just <laughs> unbelievable. And you know, he, he's been, he's been so determined to make a statement. You know, as I said, I'm not sure it's, if it's out of respect for Kit Manovich, but he's been on fire from the first point. He has, and he's also had his. Uh, tennis court condensed because of where Alcaraz has been playing his tennis we know he's somebody that's front foot inside the baseline off his service games but he's able to do that on the second serve as well you can see Alcaraz I told you he used to return from three meters back this is a good look at where he used to be back in 2022 at the three meter line he's up on the one so he's he's taking your time away on the return now he's got the ability to block it as we saw on the last point to get it back into play and if you do have a second serve is going to be inside that baseline, just Dive. muscling this ball through the court. Watch this. Well, just another little look at this, and all the superlatives exhausted, and all apply for Carlos Alcaraz, the youngest ever world number one as a teenager, and that's why. Well, I can tell you that last forehand it, it literally brought a tear to my eye. For a number of reasons. <laughs> that was extraordinary. But that's just one facet. The out and out power is, is just one dynamic he has. Pleasure to watch. And the slice approach is within 10 yeah. centimeters of the baseline. That takes amazing skill in itself. And Fitzy, how's the pace of the slice too? Just buys him the perfect amount of time to get to the net. He's got it on a string this evening. We're not using too many superlatives, are we? Are we, are we pushing the limit here, or is it? This is world well class. This yeah. is. This is just. A banquet of brilliance. That's all this is. Mm -hmm. There's nothing Ketsmanovic has done wrong here. The thing about this game, you can make no mistakes and still come off second best. I think all of us that have played this game at whatever level we played it at 13, dreamt of experiencing this once preferably for one full tournament at a major <laughs> but just once experience what it feels like to play at this level yeah. and Fitzy what we're seeing now too we are seeing players that have grown up only with poly and only with the very latest in technology and rackets. So mm. everything that they do marries up to the technology. They've they've learnt to play with this technology. It's almost a first. Game I pass. And just on one strategic I point here. 
And I certainly don't want to bring the mood down in terms of just the enjoyment that we're going through. But just on the backhand slice approaches we've seen from Alcaraz Wally, on that point, obviously with the poly, one of the big changes in the bigger headed rackets was the amount of spin that players could get. In fact, the bigger headed rackets were the, the primary reason that the spin came so prevalent in, in tennis. But then you have the poly. So therefore, we always used to get taught coming down the line and then cover. Do you think going into a two-handed backhand that has less spin, less flexibility is actually the way to play now. So you go against the kind of common thought which is coming down the line. There are the poly strings, by the way, right in front of you. Yeah, I agree, Pitch. I, I think the percentages and the way that uh, a player can approach the game now has changed. Given everything that's available to him, and then his, his shots and his stroke production marries up to what's available to him. Never gets easier in life. You eventually just have to handle hard better. And that's the case for Ketsmanovic. This is a, a tough lesson for him. Where do you think Miami can go? Well, just throwing that out there to both of you. He's, he's obviously high quality. like water and you get a sense that Alcaraz could walk on it right now well at the very least he's he's behaving like Aquaman well Fitz you asked me where he can go well right now he can go to Tullamarine but I think in the future that's the airport in Melbourne <laughs> by the way everybody I think in the future he, he's a top 20 player if he's got an appetite for hard work this guy's got game serious game top 20 for sure He, he's got an interesting amount of time against the power of Alcaraz too. Like, if, if he wasn't facing this barrage, he, he would look like uh, he had all the time in the world against a normal competitor, I would think, which is a good sign. Great observation. What did you say about time, Pitsy? Yes. <laughs> it's always good in retrospect, isn't it? That's a good change up from Ketsmanovic as well. I mean, that's 166k second serve. And I mean, Alcaraz made that look like it was about 120. <laughs> oh, this is extraordinary. fast and sometimes it's hard to appreciate it oh how was the stretch on the right leg there that retained balance It's been all out, Karaz. 
and it's been special. You know, like in uh, in music, you have the note and then you have another note, and in the middle you have the music. You actually have the tune in between those. That's what I think about with Alcaraz. Not only do you see the shot, but also my eyes are just completely glued to him moving from that shot to another. I've almost lost in the last 40 minutes any sense of watching Ketsmanovic. It's like my whole <laughs> concentration has just gravitated to what this man is doing. I mean, it is just pure magnetism, and it's rare. You've turned into a groupie commentator. Yeah, I mean, well, it, I mean, just as you said, Fizzy, I mean, just watching somebody perform at this level in a sport that we know yeah. is one of the hardest, one of the most hostile, and turning it into the art form he has tonight. Incredible. It's been a real experience. A real experience watching him here. Been memorable. And the one thing I want to say when you watch a performance like this, isn't it quite incredible that Novak Djokovic is still making somebody like Alcaraz an understudy to his brilliance yeah, because yeah, he won forget. three majors last year and was a set away from winning the calendar Grand Slam. Oh. I keep thinking there's a new frontier coming. Can you remember Carlos playing this well in any match last year? Or, or did you see him play this well? Because if you didn't, all I would say is yes, Novak's in the draw. And Sinner's in the draw and Medvedev's in the draw. But someone is going to have to play extraordinary stuff to beat this guy if he plays at this level. But matchups can change a lot. Good stuff from me, man. 15. Just one more indelible memory to take with you tonight. Match point. Game seven. Three sets to love, six four, six four, six four. That is one of the best individual performances you will ever see in tennis.
The stage always remains the same in tennis, only the location changes. And for a long time in men's tennis, the actors have stayed the same. But there is one man that is looking to change all of that. He is potentially going to be the greatest of the next generation. We still have the best of this generation in the draw, Novak Djokovic, but that was an absolute joy to behold. And I think that applause says a lot about this young man. They appreciated it. There wasn't a lot of noise because I think one side of the court was just so good. But this man was good too. And he's got a lot of uh, tennis, a big career to look forward to. He's had an amazing tournament. Played 14 out of a potential 15 sets to get to this particular stage. Two of the matches he won, he was down a couple of match points against some astonishing finishes to those match, particularly against Struff. I think it was a 33-shot rally. He has shown his metal, Mir Mir, in Melbourne. But it is Alcaraz that moves through to his first ever quarterfinal here at the Australian Open in simply devastating fashion. Carlos is with Jim. Carlos, congratulations. That was a mighty impressive performance. So last time, the only time that you played Misha was an incredibly difficult match. It was 7-6 in the third in a three-set match, really close. Today it was less close. What are you pleased with? What, were, what was working for you tonight in this match? Well, I think everything. Uh, I did, uh, <laughs> I did uh, everything almost uh, perfectly. Uh, yeah, you said in Miami in 2022, it was uh, really close there, the match, uh, high, high level from both parts. Uh, I think today it was, uh, it was a pretty good match as well. But uh, yeah, as I said, I uh, pushed uh, him to the limit in every ball, in uh, every point. Uh, and uh, obviously he has played uh, a lot of matches in five sets, uh, a lot of uh, tough matches before, before this one. So probably physically, uh, he wasn't uh, at his uh, 100%, you know, and uh, in, as I said, in every ball that I push uh, him to the limit, uh, moving side, uh, side by side, uh, I could uh, take my chances uh, in, in every set, and I think I, it was a, a pretty good match for, for, my, for myself. Yeah, it was a very good match, no doubt. <laughs> He's a very good player. We were hoping to see you play this tournament last year. You got injured. You couldn't make it. This is your third time competing in the main draw here in Melbourne. This is the furthest you've gone. You're spending more time on Rod Laver Arena. How comfortable are you starting to feel here in Melbourne on this court? Well, I'm feeling better and better every day. Uh, obviously, uh, every match that uh, I've, uh, I've played here in Rod Laver, I've uh, been feeling com more comfortable uh, and obviously it's a, a pleasure to play here in Road Labour Arena. It's an amazing core, really beautiful one of course. As I said, as, as I said many times here, the, the, the people here in Melbourne, here in Australia are, are so kind so I'm enjoying playing uh, in front of all of you uh, and I think thanks to that I'm uh, so in my, my best level. Uh, you know, feeling uh, feeling like home. It's uh, it's always uh, it's always great. So uh, yeah, I hope to uh, still feeling better and better every day. This was your first tournament of the year, so you came here early. So Melbourne has been your home for what about two weeks now? You've been in Melbourne, is that right? Yeah, two weeks. So are you starting to get into routines when you get comfortable on your day off? What, do you have certain restaurants that you like? What happens on your days off uh, that makes you feel like you're at home? Well, uh, I mean, the nights before every match, I always try to, to eat sushi. I love it. So <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's uh, my, my routine. I mean, I have now a favorite restaurant, a favorite place. I just... Uh, you know, trying to uh, try different things here in Melbourne, but uh, the sushi is the right thing.
Sushi's working for you. Good. Right. <laughs> Why not? It's working. Um, so there are a lot of the players on tour that talk about how they really enjoy watching you play and, and seeing all the different shots that you're trying to hit. Who do you like to watch play on tour? Men's, women's tour, wheelchair, doesn't matter. Who are your favorite players to watch when you have some spare time? Well, uh, I'm a huge fan of tennis. I love to, to watch uh, every match if I, if I can. Uh, but uh, I love uh, watching play Daniel, for example, uh, Novak. Medvedev? Yeah, Medvedev, uh, Novak, Sinner uh, as well. Uh, I mean, those guys, uh, I like to, to watch because uh, every time that uh, they step on the court, they put uh, his, uh, his best level. And uh, as, a huge fan, as a huge fan of tennis, I, I like to watch uh, pretty good tennis, uh, high level. So those, those players are the, the best players in the, in the world. I really like to, to watch it. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to put you on the spot, though. What about WTA? Well, I, I watch uh, WTA as well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, uh, when, when I can, obviously, uh, I mean, when uh, I turn the TV on, uh, if uh, it's uh, w WTA, ATP, uh, whatever, I, I, li I like to watch it, obviously. I'm going to get you, my man. I'm working on it, but I'm going to get you. But <laughs> it's okay. Your next match, let's get back to focus. You're in the quarterfinals for the first time here in the Australian Open. You're going to go up against someone who's been difficult for you to play at times. Sasha Zverev, he won today in a, a very tough match. What are you looking forward to in that match? What are the keys for you to be successful? Well, uh, I think playing uh, at this level, I will have uh, my chances, uh, I think. Uh, obviously, as, uh, as I saw, uh, he has played uh, tough matches as well, five sets, tiebreak in the, in the fifth set. So, I think uh, it's gonna it's gonna be tough for him as well. Uh, you know, I I remember in in US Open uh, he was struggling the runs before uh, before coming to 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 my match and uh, yeah he uh, he was in uh, in his hundred percent in the US Open. So let's see if uh, I hope to to play a, a really tough match against him. I love playing against against him against Sasa. Uh, I think both of us bring a. a High intense uh, tennis, a high level of tennis. I think for the crowd as well, it's a, it's a, a great match. So I I will try to put my my 100%, my best tennis, and uh, let's see what happens. Melbourne, are you looking forward to that one? I certainly am. Congratulations to Carlos Alcaraz.